So we're going to start back, I guess, a while ago <laughs> and tell you a little bit about our journey. Um, to Let me start first by when, one of our first dates, or maybe it was the first time we really talked about marriage or having kids at all. She, we threw out and was mostly joking how many kids we were going to have. Yeah, it wasn't even our first date. Honey. Yeah, it was like, and I, I said eight. So I thought you said like 10, but maybe I anyway, said 10. There was a lot. It, it was a big number. And so I think from our very start of our relationship, our family starting, um, we were expecting a big family. We want a lot of kids. I just wanted to start with that. <laughs> and then even when we got married, um, we were young and broke <laughs> and going to school. And um, so, you know, we, we started with being on birth control and stuff for a while, but um, Matt kind of, when we, I, we, it was only a few months in, but he kind of like <laughs> reprimanded me um, to say like, why are we waiting to have kids and stuff? So it wasn't even a whole year before we thought we were taking the next step to- I was excited to, to start bring, a family. to start a family. I think too, like we got married in December and in February we went on a, on a ski trip um, to Telluride and I got really, I threw up one morning and um, we both thought, because I was horrible at taking the pill, we both thought that I must be pregnant because um, I never throw up and I was just so sick in the, that morning. Um, and so because we were away, we, we couldn't, you know, we had to wait a while before we could even test or anything like that. And so I think it was like, I don't know, maybe 24 hours or something that we just thought we might be pregnant. And it was kind of eye-opening, I guess, because we were so newlywed and everything. But all of a sudden it went, even just in those 24 hours, from the shock of it to like being excited um, about the possibility of having kids. So, um, but, you know, obviously a lot of time went on and we were probably a little too lax about it. Um, in, in some ways we felt like we just had to put our trust in Heavenly Father and that um, even though we took the step to kind of go off of birth control and everything and expected it to happen, um, probably that first year was a bit hard because every month we thought, oh, we're going to be pregnant this month and it just didn't happen. Um, but, but so we were probably, you know, I think at that point we just made a decision that um, it was going to happen when it was going to happen and that we couldn't let our lives revolve around that. And um, I, I remember just at some point in my life realizing that if I was only sent here to be with Matt, that, um, that, that, that I, was, I, I could be happy about that and I was happy about that and I felt so blessed just to have him because I know there's so many people that don't even get married or um, are in a marriage where they're not so loved and appreciated. And I just recognize that huge blessing in my life just to be with him. And I wanted to, um, I guess, honor and cherish that part of it too and not be, um, I don't know, there's, there's, when you go through infertility, it's hard because you there's a lot of choices along the way, and it can, it can, you know, change your relationship if you allow it to. But I'm just grateful that all along that Matt, um, that we supported each other through it, and that um, if anything, like, no, at sometimes like other people know, you know, they kind of know you're going through things, but they don't. They can't necessarily comprehend in a way like you, you don't it's hard to explain to them exactly how you feel and you know some people don't know how to ask you about it or talk to you about it but um, but I always had Matt to talk to about it and um, and if anything I think that made us feel closer because he's the one person that understood you know and so, 
point did you want to say about it? Um, we, um, throughout our marriage, we, we always felt that we would have a family, though. Um, I have given Lori blessings, um, you know, promise, promising that we'll have a family someday. And also in our patriarchal blessings, uh, it does mention us having a family and someone to uh, raise and, and to love. So we were, I don't know, it wasn't like we weren't, um, we weren't that worried about if our family was ever going to happen. Yeah, I think we always had that peace that, um, that it day. was going to happen. So that kind of made us be a little bit more lax about starting because we just felt like it must have just been a timing thing or something like that. So, um, but yeah, I think we always had that um, confidence and that faith or that hope that somehow, some way, um, whenever it was right, it was going to happen. So, but then it, it's, it's hard because there were, you know, you have to try to figure out what faith means um, in a different way. Like, um, I literally, like, I thought I knew what faith meant. But sometimes after you go so far, you try different things. And it's been so long. It's, um, I just remember the last time that we did um, insemination, that we, that that's the first time, like it, I think always, like we were, our whole plan was to do it three times and then to move on to something else. And um, the last time, the last time was the hardest because. The other times it was like, oh, it just didn't work this time, so we're just going to try again. But once you go so far, like you realize, you know, you start to get to that point where you realize that, um, that you know, it, it's just not going to happen that way. And um, in a way, you know, I think for us, like for me, especially from the beginning, like adoption was always an option and it wasn't something that I... Um, it wasn't, it wasn't like a, a bad option or anything like that. It was just we felt like we needed to do everything that we could um, to have a family and then, um, and then know if, if that we had done everything. And so then we would open that door. And um, so the, I don't know, the last time I think it was more just a, um, just opening up our hearts to the next thing, like to realize we'd done everything that we could, um, and just to, just to be at that point. But the crazy thing is that we, we kind of took a break for a year. Um, financially it was the worst. I mean, the last time we did it was the worst time that we could have ever done it. Like the whole market had just fallen out and, um, you know, in the business that Matt's in that, affected us immediately and um, he was going through his worst year at, at work and so we just needed to like put our finances in order and things like that before we could even think about what the next step would be because um, either choice that we had either to do in vitro or to do in, um, to move towards adoption they're both expensive and so um, we kind of took a break and then um, it was actually some friends of ours, Nate and Lou, um, did insemination and um, had their son. And in the process of um, in the process of that, uh, I Lou's, Lou's mother, I guess, had paid for or helped with that. And um, our brother-in-law, I guess, overheard my sister talking about that at a soccer game of all places and um, and so Adam actually came to us and felt inspired that he um, wanted to help us have a family and and that kind of just kick-started things for us again I guess like we realized you know we have to we have to try like we have to be doing something and uh, it had been about a year and um, so we were ready to 
do that again. So just crazy things happen all along the way. Like right after that, we we weren't happy with our doctor that we had, and we switched clinics and, or started looking. And um, there was only one biz like when you go through infertility, lots of people give you advice, and lots of people give you, and it's all well intended. Like we we always knew it was from their heart. Like we never chose to be offended or anything when. Um, because people don't always know what to say or, or do, but um, we always felt so loved and supported by them. And um, but anyway, this, this of all the cards and advice we ever got, there's just only one card we ever kept. And um, as I started researching again, I was really impressed with this one clinic. And then it dawned on me, I think that's the same card. And I kind of thought like, oh, it must be a sign, you know, like that's the where we're supposed to go. And we went. And, we checked out the clinic and um, loved it. Like we're told, it was completely different than the one that we had been working with, and we were really impressed um, that that was where we should go and start. And we did that in December. You could go to like a seminar for it, and then January, as we were getting on, about to get on the plane to go to Whistler, um, we got a call from the clinic that we had actually won insemination. So. It was just like this, you know, once again, like a, um, such a, um, I don't know, it was just like, we just felt like Heavenly Father was, you know, laying this in our hands for us and moving us forward again. And um, But as a, a result of that, um, you know, we... We went and met with the new doctor and everything and loved him. He spent like four and a half hours with us for free, which is unheard of. But um, at the end of it, um, we had already planned everything out. And then all of a sudden, he, he felt impressed that we should, because it had been some time that, that he should do an exam on me again. And so we did. And um, out of the blue, we, anyway, they, he discovered things that were, um, somehow not there before but it was very mind-boggling that they weren't there before and um, anyway we started we spent a whole nother year um, of going through that and I, I forgot actually